Hello everyone, welcome back to more Dark Fall 1, the journal. I almost said Dark Souls 1. Okay, so where's Matilda Fly? Matilda Fly, the stage and screen actress best known throughout the 30s and 40s, disappeared in April 1947, following a season of badly received performances. She was, just before vanishing, appearing at the Empire State Theater in the play The Two-Faced Bride of Bodmin Moore. I thought Moore had an E on the end of it. Uh, she left the stage during her performance in... She left the stage during her performance and was never seen again. There were rumors at the time that she left London completely and fled to the countryside of Dorset. Later that same year, evidence was discovered that implies Miss Fly was a guest at the Station Hotel Dowerton. The location may ring bells with some readers as it is, a fam as it is famous for other disappearances. As many as 12 people have vanished in and around the location, but no one has ever been able to establish any cause. The 1947 event prompted police to suspect the owner, a Mr. George Crabtree, of abducting the guest and staff and then disposing of them later. No proof has ever been able, uh, has ever been able to prove of, disprove this theory, or to prove or disprove this theory. The hotel still stands, but it is not accessible to tourists. It is still owned by the Crabtree family who refuse any access to the area. I guess her uh, acting was just not good or something. I mean, she's obviously pretty. Best known throughout the 30s and 40s. Okay, what happened to Amelia Earnhardt? Ah, uh, so these are based, probably all based off of real stories and people, actually. Because I know Amelia Earnhardt is a real lady. She, she was the first, uh, I'll read here. American aviator pioneer. In 1928, she became the first woman to fly across the Atlantic. On June 1st, 1937, Amelia Earnhardt set off to fly around the world. The flight took her via Miami, Puerto Rico, Africa, uh, Karachi, Calcutta, Ragoon, Bangkok, Singapore, and Bandung. I don't know how to say that. Amelia reached New Guinea on June 29th. She had flown 22,000 miles, and there were 7,000 more to go. Amelia left New Guinea at precisely blank hours on July 2nd. The plane was loaded with 1,000 gallons of fuel, allowing for 20 to 21 hours of flying. At 800 GMT... <clears throat> Amelia made her last radio contact with Dugini. She reported being on course for Holland Island, Howland, yeah, Howland Island, at 12,000 feet at 1930 GMT. This transmission was received from her plane at maximum strength. KHAQQ calling Itasca. We must be... We must be on you, but cannot see you. Gas is running low. At 2014 GMT, the last voice transmission from Amelia is received, giving her position. By 2130 hours GMT, it was re realized that Amelia must have ditched at sea. Search procedures were implemented. It is thought that the plane went down some 35 to 100 miles off the coast of Howland Island. A life raft was on board, <clears throat> but no trace has ever been found of the raft. Experts have said that the empty fuel tanks could have kept the plane afloat for a period of time. President Roosevelt authorized a search of nine naval ships and 66 aircraft at an estimated cost of over $4 million. On July 18th, the search was abandoned. Yeah, so that is definitely based off of a true story. Look how old she was. Hmm. Okay. And we have a new tab. 
<clears throat> the seeker uh, cross my sight with web hints and learn th thy past mortals okay enter your birth details and find your previous self enter the birth date here mortal welcome mortals I am the seeker I can see your previous life it is a much more interesting one than you live out now you may be amazed you will be amazed enter your birth date for example 07 1174 Click Ask and prepare to be taken back through mists of time. Okay. Now I have to erase it. So, give my age away. This is my birth date. I see, I see that you were male in your last earthly incarnation. You were born somewhere in modern South China around 1000. Your profession was builder of roads, bridges, docks, your belief psycholog uh, psychological profile in the past life. Revolutionary type, you've inspired changes in any sphere, politics, business, religion, housekeeping. <laughs> Could be a leader lesson that your pet last la past life brought to present. You were bound to solve problems of pollution of environment, recycling, misuse of raw materials, elimination of radioactivity by all means, including psychological methods. I'm going to brainwash people to be uh, less radioactive. So what if you just make up another one? Uh, Yeah, it just slightly changes stuff. Seeker.pagan.org. Okay, so. There's nothing really to do here. Okay, once I get over here, then this one appears. And then that's the last one. Okay. Right. Peripheral help. Detected peripherals, uh, Radivision goggles. Head and product. Able to view radiation waves invisible to the human eye can detect and project radio waves long after they were first transmitted possible usage crime scene able to detect people's movements after they have left the scene forgery able to view be see there's another typo typo beyond the apparent detecting evidence beneath surface appearance war zones can detect residual radiation produced by contaminated sources and radioactive sources Additional information, unsupported evidence that the Hayden radi Radivision goggles are able to see residual radiation from beyond the stated time period of 10 days. Some evidence to show goggles may have a max viewing level of beyond 10 years. Recent range experiments found residual for more than 100 years. Need to give me some of these. Collective mag tracker. Okay, that's what we have. Electromagnetic tracker able to detect electric magnetic pulses and signatures undetectable by organic matter. Possible usage. Corporate use to detect potentially harmful radiation that can damage advanced computer systems and peripherals. Military to detect movement sensitive mines and weapons. Home to detect electric cables beyond walls, physical sciences, electromagnetic pulses, natural or supernatural. Additional information, minimize local electronic electrical sources for max effect. Right, so it doesn't interfere. 
Localized power sources can result in false readings, best results achieved by leaving on standby and watching the pulse meter. Okay. So this is here somewhere. I just haven't found it yet. And that is it. I think we are done. The computer. And then the pictures. I don't think there was anything else to do. happens in the picture. We don't know where this is, but it's not working. Right, that's that one. We already did this. It's reset, but actually we could find out because that's Camera 9, so it's camera 8. Doesn't this tell us? Um, no. Something listed, where was it? Something listed the cameras, I thought. did this. These don't tell. Exit. It's music. this lists it, but I thought there was something else that listed the camera numbers and told where they were. It's camera 8. You could open maybe one of these or something and find the um, binoculars, but maybe not. Okay. Anything else to do here? I don't really think so. So let's leave for a while, go somewhere else, do something different. We can always come back here now because we have a key. So let me look at my notes here. See where we should head next. Okay, so let's go to 2E. Just further down this way. This 
door. Let's look at this stuff again here. This is Andrew Verney's room. Are you interested? Why did you see that again? Are you interested in astronomy too? And then, yeah, I'll do this again. It's really hard to line it up right. Oh, I had it. I'm not using, uh, I'm not using my best mouse either. Okay, you go. So I've looked at this, researched it. Um, uh, this note, it's basically, if you understand what this is implying here, it's telling you that the letters are uh, backwards. It's a backwards alphabet. Uh, we just actually encountered a backwards, backwards alphabet puzzle in another game recently. But you have to flip the alphabet around and put the letters in the correct way in that position as if they were being read in a forward position. And then that's how you decode all of this uh, scrambled stuff that doesn't make any sense. That's what this is about. So when we come out and we look over here again, there's more stuff to mess with. Edith is a wonder. She's been the perfect host for several years now. Strange taste in art, though. So we got this note here. And I'll read you what this says. I've already decoded it. Basically says, guard the skin with your life. I know I sound like a madman. Edith is feeling inclined to phone the police. You must trust me. There is a great evil with us here in the hotel. My research is going well. I just need time. P.S. Do not open your door this night to anyone. Okay, so that's basically what that says. If you translate everything using the backwards alphabet, uh, you get the proper... Uh, and that's from Crabtree, George Crabtree. Um, and then we have this puzzle box. I've been trying to remember the combination. I forget so much these days. And it has seven little buttons here you can click that you have to do in a certain manner which we don't know yet. Some drawers. So this is mapping an alternate sky. This gives you the code um, that you're going to need. We've already read this. But I uh, will leave it up here again for you to see it. So this is not useful yet. 
because we don't know uh, basically what constellation, I guess, we're looking for. And these are empty. And there's boxes up here you can look at, but you can't look at them any further than this. So, and in here, showing the uh, buttons and the numbers they represent. My memory is obviously getting worse. I'm turning into that silly old man that my mother said I would. And then we have maps here uh, representing different constellations. So we don't know what we're looking for here yet either. So we had to utilize the maps, this to let you know the number sequence, which is straightforward. And we need to utilize whatever the code is based on a name of a constellation. Okay. So if you recall outside here, out of this hall, there's Elizabeth I, there's this telescope, click on it, you can move the camera. Hmm. That's one of the constellations. Right. Brighter than the rest. I don't recognize it at all. So this one right here, that's the important bit. It's kind of like a cross shape or like a kite you would fly. And then there's like three little dots to the right side here. Brighter than the rest. I don't recognize it at all. Let's go back, here. see if we can find that constellation, make a save, I haven't saved in a while, okay, let's see, okay, just looking here, analyzing it. Don't see it on that one. Definitely not that. Definitely not that. So it must be here. Okay, that's not it. There it is. There's the little dot. There's the dots. Yep, that's it. Okay, Raka or Raka. Okay. So now we'll find Rika in here. There it is. Okay, there's the code. 12534 76. So hopefully that will open this. So then it would be 1, 2, Wait a second. Five, three, four, uh, seven, six. There we go. Okay. Gotcha. What do we got? Uh, I got 
too sure why George gave me this. He was a bag of nerves at the time. It's written on vellum, you know. Do you know what that is? It's skin. Animal skin, we can hope. Okay. Make a note of that symbol. Okay, a four with the little curve. Okay. We have, uh, I think, four symbols Lusa, Larsus, Cars, the K, Raka, the four, and then there was another four we found with that same little curve, but like at the top. Um, and we don't know the name of that one. So I have five symbols and four names, I think, for those symbols. I think we need, what, 12 symbols total, I think. Okay. So... All right, that's all that's in there. I'm not too sure why George gave me this. It was a bag of nerves at the time. It's written on vellum, you know. Do you know what that is? It's skin, animal skin, you can hope. Let's look for a possible name. I was mapping this sky. The constellations as the Vikings would have seen them. Something happened. I don't remember what. Okay. Right. I think we're done in here. Go to here. There is a device back here. I wanted to look at again. Thirteen images. Okay. Yeah, that symbol. I should draw that. I don't think I've drawn that one. Bear with me a moment. It's got like a little cross or something at the bottom. I'm assuming we need to know not just the Symbol, what it looks like, but the name uh, as well. Mm. A mummy statue. That table again. Oops. symbols up there. Yeah. Okay. wanted to see what those pictures were again because I did not notate that symbol in the one picture.
Might be a camera up there. Okay, guys, we will stop this video here. I'm making some more progress slowly. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next part. Bye.